the Chris Hogan Retirement IQ Tool. Uh, Bob from Tennessee writes in. It's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, like many others, I've tried lots of tools online to judge my fitness for retirement. I've tried the Chris Hogan Retirement IQ Tool, which to me is the most ridiculous thing on the planet. The advice from that tool requires answering only three questions. One, what do you currently make? Two, when do you want to retire? And three, how much do you have saved? I just retired and I'll be 65. I have 450,000 between a small pension and my 401k. I've been living on approximately 60,000 a year net for the past two years. Using Hogan's tool, I need to start saving 41,000 a month. <laughs> that can't be right. I, I mean, I just, <laughs> to retire a year from now. Uh, no, says Bob. I saw Hogan live in a Ramsey presentation a few years ago, and I respected his views until his tool came out. Thanks for your, for your Can You Retire on 300,000K video, uh, 300K video uh, from a while back. It confirmed my numbers completely. I, I followed the Devin Carroll video early, uh, out earlier today to calculate my PIA with real numbers versus Social Security continuing my 2017 income for two more years in their retirement calculator. I'm 99% sure that Hogan discounts any income other than savings. Thoughts? Yeah. I, <laughs> geez, man. If, if, <laughs> I mean, the absurdity on his face that you need to save 41000 a month. Uh, I, I don't even know what to where to state that. All right, so let's... <laughs> all right, how much did Bob tell us how much he made in income? Uh, he's living on 60,000. So let's just say he made that as an income. All right. So he, he's living on, uh, I've been living on 60 for the past two years. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to say Bob makes $60,000 a year in income. And we're just going to even discount it. Say he only made 50,000 a year in income over the course of his working career. Right. So we got 50,000 a year. We times that by 35 years, 50,000 times 35 years. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> just good night. That gives us 1.75 million will be our total index wages. And again, 50,000 in income wasn't 50,000 in that number in 1995. It was, you know, 28,000 or something like that. This is the indexed amount, man, the indexed amount. All right, so we're saying... 50,000 today was indexed to get us what we were making 24,000 in 1994 is equal to 50,000 today. I hope that makes sense. I'm just telling you, man, this is where I'm right. I'm actually working on this in the next chapter of my book as we talk about right now. You got to understand how the indexing stuff works. And I just tell you, if you look at your Social Security statement, you don't know that. Your Social Security statement says, oh, she made $786 in 1984 when you're picking strawberries or whatever I was doing back then. I'm like, well, hell, I'm. I'm not going to be able to live off that. But it doesn't tell you on a Social Security statement that they index that based on your date of birth because it's the earliest year of retirement, of eligibility. I won't get into that here today. But just remember, the money you made that the Social Security state reports uh, in 1994, 1995, 1996, that's what they're reporting. That does not report the indexed amount, the inflated amount. you got to understand your indexing factor. All right. So let's go back to my man Bob here in Tennessee. So we take his one75 million I just dropped my okay and divide by 420 and the reason we're dividing by 420 is because there's 35 years a social security takes your top 35 years and there's 12 months in a year 35 times 12 is 420 so that gives us an AIME of 4166 all right 4166 so we know how to factor this in and hopefully you've been following this you can you know know this pretty well the first 926, we times that by 0 0.9, that gives us 833, all right? So we take 94166 minus 926, that gives us 833. Oops. And then we take the rest, 4166 minus 926, that gives us 3240. We times that by 0.32, I'll show you what I'm talking about, it gives us 1037. <clears throat> all right, so we take... 4166 is we're assuming his average uh, yearly earnings were 50,000 a year. Now he's living on 60,000 a year, so I bet it's higher than that, but we'll just use this. 4166 minus 926, 
which gives us 3240, which is the next bend point. 3240 times 0 0.32 is $1,037. Added to 833, that gives us a PIA of 1870. A PIA of 1870, all right? Now, he doesn't say if he's married, so we're just going to say he's not. Right? He's got 450. He's got, so he needs 60000 a year to live on. He's getting 1870 times 12. Uh, 22,000, 22,440. So he needs $60,000 minus 22,440, uh, 37,000 a year from his 401k. Now this can be tough to do for this guy. Uh, I, a, if he's not married, B, if they're using his AIME correctly, uh, but well, let's just run the number. So he needs 37,560. He's got $450,000. So let's take 37,560 divided by 450 to get a gauge of his withdrawal amount. This would be pretty tough. And he's taking 8.3% a year off this portfolio. All right, so that would be tough. Uh, if, if I am correct on that for his AIME, I bet I'm not. I just dropped my cap here. Uh, that'd be tough for him to make that work because 8.3%, no one in the right mind would say that's uh, sustainable in retirement. So then what we'd do is say, okay, instead of taking the 1870 as your uh, PIA, you're going to have to wait. You got to wait till you're 70 years old. And we're going to take that one by 1.32. That'd be equals 24680. A 2468 uh, simply because we waited with the delayed earnings credits. All right, so 2468 times 12, that gives us 29,620. So essentially, we need 30,000 a year from our retirement 401k plan at 30 divided by 450. That's a 6.6% .6 withdrawal rate. And that's, that's tough too. I mean, so that's going to be hard to make that work as well if the numbers I'm using are correct. Now, we have to save 40,000 a month, and that's just stupid. Now, but a, a lot of things going on here that I think people overlook, and they should not. A, again, assumes that you're going to spend the same amount of money each and every year in retirement. Um, so if we're saying we're going to 8.3 is too high, it is too high. No financial planner would say you can take 8.3% a year off and, and be very comfortable, be assured of your ability to make ends meet in the long run. But... 6.6% .6 starts looking a little bit better, but it's still, even me, the, an optimistic guy, I don't think that's, I'd still, that make me concerned. I would not sit here and say, hey, you know, you can spend $60,000 a year uh, for the rest of your life adjusted for inflation. And uh, and if you, as long as you wait till your delayed earnings credits with Social Security, uh, you'll be okay. I wouldn't say that because the simple facts are, it, it's that's, that's too high. All right, it's too high of a withdrawal rate for sure. Uh, so the other alternative, of course, is hopefully he's married. Um, if he's married, then his wife will get half of his benefits. So we'll just say 1870 divided times uh, divided by two plus 1870 equals 29,000. So in that case, all right. So now let's just say between he and his wife, um, he gets 29,000, 2,900 a month in Social Security. 2,915 times that by 12. That's 35,000 dollars. Uh, excuse me, 35, 29, 15 times 12 is 34, 9, 8. So now we're a whole lot closer. So 34, 9, 80, and he needs $60,000 a year in income, my $60,000 a year. That gives us 25,000 he needs from his portfolio. All right, so here, that's his benefit and his wife's spousal benefit. We're times that by 12, that's 35,000 a year. He needs 60,000 a year to live on. He needs 25,000 off his portfolio. 25 divided by 450 is five and a half percent. I'd be very comfortable saying that, absolutely. Now again, I'd much rather he he waited a year or two to take Social Security, but five and a half percent, I'm comfortable without question. Obviously, I won't say just set and forget it, never look at it again. But you know, if you're looking at five and a half to five, five and a half to six, I'm pretty comfortable that given the gauge that or the idea that spending decreases and it does substantially in retirement. So I'd, I'd be okay with that. So in this regard, we made it work if he's married. Uh, we made it work without even assuming his average index monthly earnings were higher than what I as attributed to it. And I said it was 4166. If he's living off $60,000 a year, it's hard to imagine, hard to imagine that he's used to living off 50,000 a year while he's retired, while he's working, and now he's jumped up, was that 18.5% uh, or something like that. 
until I bought in retirement. It could happen, but I highly suspect it didn't. So, like, I got no problem with Chris Hogan. I got no problem. And it's driving me crazy. I can't find my cap. I got no problem with Dave Ramsey, uh, generally speaking. But uh, this, uh, this retirement IQ, I have a huge problem with it when all they're saying is, what is your income? What's your savings? What does it say? How much do you have saved? Uh, when do you want a retirement? How much you currently make? Uh, yeah. That's infantile stuff there. All right. Hey, well, Bob, good luck to you, man. I hope this helps, my friends, and we'll see you next time.